All right, everyone. Welcome back to 4.8, the second last lesson of Unit Four. We are going to be looking at linear solving linear and quadratic inequalities、um, in one variable graphically today. Okay, so we're going to move away from quadratic function a little bit today. We're going to focus on inequalities. Now, when we speak about inequalities, I have to mention about this point right here again.、Uh, very important. Okay, when you have When you're solving inequalities, when you multiplied or divided by a negative number in an inequality, you have to flip the inequality sign. Okay. When again, if you multiplied or divided by a negative number, you need to flip the inequality sign. Okay. So that's important.、Uh, some definition here: critical critical values. They are just the x-intercepts of、uh, well any function really. Okay. But we're only going to focus on linear and quadratic functions. So that's what critical values are. Okay. So here are a couple of examples.、Um, I'll show you the first one. I'll let you try the second one. Okay. It says solve linear inequalities and represent the solution on a number line. Okay. So when we solve linear inequalities graphically, what we want to do is we want to make it kind of equal to zero, but I mean it's not equal sign. So、uh, but we're gonna move everything to one side and keep one side just zero. Okay. So I'm going to move everything to the right, so I can keep the x positive. So zero is less than. If I move three x to the right, I get two x. Move negative seven to the right, that's plus seven, so I get negative four. So that's what I have. If I read it backwards, I get two x minus four is greater than zero. Okay. So now I can actually graph y equals two x minus four. I'm going to use this to help me to solve this inequality here. So x. So recall, this two is the slope. That's the slope. Negative four is the y-intercept. Okay. So y-intercept is negative four. The slope is two. And recall, two is same thing as two over one. So that means rise over run. So we go two up and one to the right. So two up, one to the right. Two up, one right. Two up, one right, and so on. Okay. So that's all the points that I need. That's actually more than enough. Okay, so I'm just gonna join the points, and here's my y equals to two x minus four. Now, how does this help us solve this inequality here? Well, it says two x minus four is greater than zero. So if you look at this graph, which part of this graph is actually bigger than zero? Well, when we talk about bigger than zero, we're talking about the y value, right? Because here's y, and that's zero, right? So we're looking at this portion of the graph because that part of the graph. Well, all the y values are bigger than zero. So when does that happen?、Okay. When does this happen? Well, this happens when x is bigger than two, right? You can see here is the x value of two. Anything after that, we have y values bigger than zero. So when you put this、uh, solution on the number line, what you need to do is well, here's first write your number line, one, two, three, and so on.、Um, We know x is bigger than two, so what you do is you put a circle over two. This time it's going to be a hollow circle because there is no equal sign here. It's just it's just inequality sign less than or greater than. There's no equal sign there, and we know that x is bigger than two because all these part have y values bigger than zero, and the x value for this portion of the graph is when x is bigger than two. So now what you do is starting from two, you just draw arrow to the right. To indicate that it's more than two, okay, and that's it. That's the answer to part A. Okay, I'll let you try part B, and、um, I'll show you the solution in a bit. You just follow the same procedure, right? Make it. Well, I okay. I wanted to say equal to zero, but it's not. You move everything to one side and、uh, zero on the other side. Okay. Good luck. Okay, so here is the solution for part B. Notice how I kept my x negative this time because I mean, if I move it over,、um, I get negative six, and you can see on this grid, I I didn't I didn't actually put negative six there. So I move everything to the left.、Um, so I have negative three over two x plus six is greater than or equal to zero. And I draw the line. I'm looking for the part of the graph that's bigger than zero, which is the part that's above the x-axis. So all these y values are bigger than zero, and this occurs when x is less than four. 
right? Less than equals two four. So notice how my solution here this time is not a hollow circle; it's a solid circle, um, because you have equal sign right here in in your question. Okay, so when you don't have equal sign for your inequality, it's a hollow circle. When there is an equal sign down there you make sure that it's a solid circle. Okay, again, it's less than four, so I drew my arrow to the left. Okay, so that's how you solve linear inequalities. For quadratic inequalities, it's very much the same, okay? So here is that you can see the quadratic function y equals to x squared minus two x minus three is graphed below. Determine the inequality sign for each different situations. What part of the graph is positive and what part of the graph is negative? Okay, so let's look at the positive part first. This is the quadratic function, right? The graph or the quadratic function. You can see this portion is bigger than zero, right? Those two parts are bigger than zero. And when does that happen? Again, if you want to show this on number line, um, here is negative one. So I'm going to show zero here, negative one, negative two, one and two. Um, okay, it only says which part is positive, so we will not do any equal to zero, okay? It's just positive. Zero is not positive, nor negative, okay? So this time, I'm not going to use the solid circle, it's just going to be a hollow one. Um, it's going to be at negative one, right? This is where x, uh, sorry, this is where y equal to zero, but we want bigger than zero, we want positive, and this portion is positive. That is to the left of negative one. So on the number line, draw your arrow like that. This portion is also bigger than zero, and this occurs after x value of three. So then what you need to do is you just need you need to extend your number line a little bit here. And at three, again, it's gonna be a hollow circle, and the x values here are bigger than three, so you draw arrow to the right. That's it. For the negative portion, okay, for the negative portion, I'll do this in blue. For the negative portion, it's right here. This portion of this graph is negative for the y values. So what you need to do is, again, draw your number line, negative one, negative two, negative three, one, two, three. This occurs between the x values of negative one and positive three. And again, so I'm, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put two circles around negative one and positive three, put a four there as well. And because this time is in between negative one and three, so what you need to do is you don't draw arrows, but you just connect these two circles to show that we're looking at two value, all the values between negative one and three, not including negative one and three though, okay? So that's it, not too bad, right? Not, not too difficult. So the key to solve quadratic inequalities, then draw the graph, okay? Well, I guess, guess that's what we're gonna do, okay? So when we, draw, uh, when we draw quadratic functions, remember you need to move everything to one side, okay? So here it says solve two x squared minus five x less than three and represent the solution on a number line. So first step, what, I we, what we need to do is to make it zero, so less than three, sorry, minus three is less than zero. And now factor this, okay? And this is going to be two x, x, it's gonna be minus three and plus one, okay? Because negative one, sorry, negative three times one is negative three, that's what we wanted. Two times negative three is negative six, one times one is one, negative six plus one is negative five, that's also what we wanted. It has to be two x and x because that's how you only way you can multiply the two. Okay, so here is our x intercepts, um, and again, x intercepts is important because we're comparing against zero. So we need to find the x intercepts. Okay, so here in this case, x intercepts are two x plus one is zero. Solve for x, you get negative one half or negative zero point five. In this case, x is simply three. So here is my x intercept. And here is my x-intercept. And I mean, because we're solving inequality, we are not actually gonna graph this, we're not gonna sketch this graph accurately, okay? So really that's all I need. Okay, I'm not gonna ask you to show me the, uh, the vertex or anything like that, because we're not. that's not the purpose of the question here. 
but we do need to know whether the graph opens upwards or downwards, right? Downward, downwards, or upwards. Um, well, the median coefficient is positive too, so we know the graph is going to open upwards like this. Okay, something like that. Okay, well, you know what? I'm going to make it a little bit more accurate. I know the y-intercept is going to be negative 3 for sure. Okay, because that's easy to get. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to add another point right there. I don't know where the vertex is. It, it's okay. Okay, so then, the arrow there, we can solve the, we can, uh, yeah, solve the question now, okay? It says it's less than zero. So if you look at the graph, the part of this graph that's less than zero is this portion. Again, we're looking at the y values less than zero. So that's the part underneath the x-axis. So this happens between negative 0.5 and 3 for the x values. Therefore, your solution on the number line is going to be like this. Uh, let me say that's negative 1. Therefore, this is negative 0 0.5. 1, 2, okay. 1, 2, 3, 4. And again, there is no equal sign here. So the circle that we're going to draw is going to be hollow one. And a 3, this time again, is in between these two x-intercepts. So we just need to join these two hollow circles together like that. And you're done. Okay, simple. Okay, now finally, we are going to come up with, uh, we're going to solve some word problems, okay? Uh, it says a rectangular construction site is to be enclosed with fencing. Okay, here we go, rectangular construction site. The length of the site is to be 15, so I'm going to say this is length and this is width. It says the length is to be 15 meters longer than its width. So length is equal to W plus 15, right? 15 meters longer than width. So W plus 15. What dimensions are possible if at least 700 square meters of land is to be enclosed? So this has to be greater than or equal to 700 square meters. Okay, write an inequality to represent the situation. Well, area is equal to length times width. And again, we can have two variables. Um, and we did come up with this um, expression for length in terms of w. So I can substitute l with w plus 15 times w. I can expand this. I get w squared plus 15w. Okay, so this is the area um, expression. We want the area to be bigger than 700. So w squared plus 15w is bigger than equal to 700. That's it. That's the answer. Write an equality to re represent the situation. We're done. Okay, now we might as well solve it. <laughs> we have the inequality, right? Might as well solve it. To solve inequalities, again, this is quadratic inequality. You need to make it zero on one side. Oops. So you need to minus 700. And this is going to be bigger than equal to zero. So again, we need to do a quick sketch of this graph. We need to find the x-intercept, which means we need to factor this. Uh, is this factorable 700? Ooh, what do we have? 35 times 20. Yes. So this is going to be w plus 35 times w minus 20, period and equal to 0. So our x-intercept would be negative 35 and 20. Okay. So negative 35 is here. Positive 20 is here. This is w squared. Therefore, the graph opens upwards. It looks like this. Okay, we want it to be bigger than zero. So the, por the portion that's bigger than zero on our graph is this and that. There you go, Mickey Mouse. Um, however, however, we have context in this question. Our W represents the width. Would it make sense to be this portion of the graph? Because this tells me the width Sure, the, the, the area is big. I mean, the area is going to give us more than 700 with these values, these x values. But these x values, or sorry, w, these w values are less than negative 35. That doesn't make any sense. The width cannot be negative, right? So this is the only portion that we actually care about. 
because w is positive there. And again, w is the width. Width has to be positive, cannot be negative. So our solution is actually this, 0. I'm going to say that's 10, that's 20. This time, I'm going to put a solid dot for the 20 because you have there's the equal sign there. It's to the right, right? You can see this portion is bigger than 0, and the w values are to the right of 20. So there you go. That's how you show the solution in this case, 20 meters. As long as the width is more than 20 meters, um, we will have this rectangular area to be more than or equal to 700 square meters. Okay, so that's it. That's the end of this lesson. Um, you can see you need to know how to graph. Then you can solve this. No problem. Okay, so do some practice and let me know if you need help. Good luck.